our emotions need us to move because emotions are energy in motion. So for all of us to be able to handle the big emotions, like probably the ones we're having these days, we need to feel and express and physically move, or we're going to feel energetically stuck, lethargic, or even spacey. So movement and expression of our emotions helps us and our children feel more grounded, centered, and relaxed. Then we can have more success in our parenting, in our relationships, and more fun in just about everything that we do. So thanks for playing with me tonight. And okay, it's time to move. So this is our first activity for tonight. And I call this a squiggle. I know that's a very technical term, isn't it? But what I want you to do is follow me over here. And wherever you are, if you can have room to get up, I would like, I invite you to stand up and squiggle. So a squiggle is moving your head, moving your arms, moving your hips, moving your legs, and just squiggle as much as you can. Shake it, shake it, yeah. And then take a nice deep breath. And exhale. That feels so much better. You know, I've been giving these talks for a while now, and I still get nervous, right, especially right at the beginning, right before I give it. So moving my energy like that, like that helps me with that anxiety because otherwise if I don't, it's just gonna sit there and be stuck in my body, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's why all of these movement techniques you're gonna to learn tonight are just so helpful for any kind of anxiety, any kind, certainly anxiety, nervousness, but all the other emotions as well. So thank you for squiggling with me. And wasn't that fun? I love what I do. So I want you all to know that, well, we all need to have more fun these days. And with all that's going on in our world, it's really important to help our kids navigate what they're feeling and give them tools to calm themselves and then teach them how to connect with nurturing relationships so that they may not only bounce back from this experience, what's going on today and really for the rest of their lives, not only bounce back, but thrive from it. And all of that starts with our self-care. You know, we're the first role models that our kids have and what a great example for them if they catch us in the act of taking care of ourselves. So I want you all to know just by being here, just by signing up for this program, you're really great parents. You care, you want to learn more, you get it. So some of my information, some of these exercises might feel a little awkward, like that squiggle might've felt weird or uncomfortable. I'd like you to give yourself permission to go past your comfort zone and take a risk. Stretch yourself. Try something new and have the courage to fail. Because you know what? None of us are perfect parents. I'm not a perfect parent. I have three adult children and they can tell you that I'm not a perfect parent or I wasn't. So, you know, if all of this is, or if any of this is new territory for you, cut yourself some slack. Give it a try and be very kind to yourself while you're learning. All right, so here's the five easy tools that you're going to learn tonight to reduce anxiety. First, you're gonna learn how to do a body scan for mindfulness. You're gonna learn the four, seven, eight breathing technique for relaxation. You're gonna learn something called a cross crawl. You're gonna learn about humming and how healthy it is for us. And you're gonna learn finger holds for managing emotions and stress. Please feel free to photograph any of the slides that you see feel free to take notes. Um, yeah, because there's so much information in this and I want you to be able to have access to it later on. I know it's gonna be recorded, I'm not sure. Jana can let us know, let you know if it's on YouTube or a Zoom channel or something with the library. But go ahead and take notes. I'm also gonna talk about Dr. Daniel Siegel and Dr. Tina Payne Bryson's book called The Power of Showing Up, How Parental Presence Shapes Who Our Kids Become and how their brain gets wired. And then I'm gonna talk about what it means to be resilient or having the ability to bounce back. And as a bonus, I'm gonna teach you a five minute meditation that you can do almost anywhere to feel better fast. 
All right. So the first thing that I want to go over with you and teach you is the body scan for mindfulness. And the reason why we do that is to come up with that SUD number. Now that SUD number is your subjective unit of distress or disturbance. And that helps you measure the intensity or the distress of anything, well, for any of us with anxiety, we can measure that in our bodies. This is a way for you to check in with yourself and ask, hey, how am I doing? Now you might be familiar with the SUD scale um, when you've gone to the hospital, a doctor might say to you, okay, where's your pain level zero? It's nothing, tenets off the charts. For our purposes, if you're, um, say you're looking for your, your scale, your rating on anxiety, zero is you're lying on the beach, you hear the ocean, you feel the sun on your skin, zero. Okay, you get it. 10 is your heart is pounding so fast it's almost jumping out of your chest. You can't breathe. You're so anxious you can't even think. Um, you're not, you know, you're just not in your body. You're so anxious. So you want to go through and figure out that number. So what I'd like you to do right now is if you're comfortable, close your eyes, or you can gaze down to the floor. And in your mind's eye or your imagination, just start at the top of your head and just notice what you notice. Do you notice anything in there physically or emotionally? And you might sense it as, um, you might have a color, it might have a texture. Sometimes we hang on to the energy of, of maybe an argument or a conversation we had earlier in the day. Maybe there's anger, maybe there's fear. Those are things that we do hold, on, hold in our bodies. So now take your attention from the top of your head to behind your eyes, to your cheeks, to your jawline, and just notice, is there tension in there? Are there aches? Is there tightness? And then go down to your neck and your shoulders. Go down your arms, to your elbows, your wrists, your hands. Again, what do you notice? Do your hands get tight? Do you clench your, your, your fists, your hands? Do your fingers fidget? Now take your attention back to your chest, your heart and your lungs, and, and go inside. Are you breathing fast? Are you breathing slow? Are you breathing or are you holding your breath? You just, you're just making a, a mental note of it. And now take your attention down to your rib cage, your stomach, your hips. What are you noticing there? Is there tightness? Is there butterflies? Now move further down to your legs, to your knees, your calves, your ankles, your feet. Do your legs tend to bounce up and down, you know, when you're sitting? So now take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. Open your eyes if they're closed. And with no judgment, th there's no judgments here. This is simply a tool for you to become mindful of how your body is responding to outside events. It is so much easier to take care of yourself when you have this awareness. You know, it's really important for us to slow down every so often or as often as we can and pay attention to what's going on in our bodies because our bodies have so much information for us. So now figure out what your SUD score is, uh, the rating of maybe anxiety in your body or tension in your body or anger or fear, pick a number. And if you find that your number is four or higher, the next technique I'm gonna teach you is a really wonderful breathing technique that almost instantly lowers it. So this is called the 478 breathing for relaxation. And I learned this from Dr. Andrew Weil. Uh, those of you who grew up in Chicago might remember him from um, WTTW. He was on, he's the one, well, he doesn't have any hair on his head anymore, but he has a big uh, white beard, he used to have big white hair. I learned this from him 25 years ago. He was the first complementary and alternative medicine doctor that I'd ever heard of. And I was so excited because here was someone who understood the East and the West coming together, body, mind, spirit of our healing. And he swears that this 478 breathing technique clears our lungs of carbon dioxide. It clears our brain of carbon, di sorry, carbon dioxide. You know, when we inhale clean oxygen and it goes into our lungs, then that 
turns into carbon dioxide, we exhale, it comes out. Now, if I'm nervous, if I'm anxious, if I'm angry, I might go into that fight or flight mode, fight, flight, or freeze mode, and I might shallow breathe. I might hold my breath all together. And when I'm doing that, I'm not getting that carbon dioxide out of my lungs. It's going into my brain, which then shuts down that, that logical thinking, reasoning side of me. And I just go into automatic mode. And also what happens is my vagus nerve, which goes from my brain all the way to my stomach, if there's not room for oxygen to come in, it's gonna start panicking. And it's gonna go, you know, warning, warning, there's something going on here. There must be something that's gonna attack her, you know, uh, go into um, response of, of looking around, always checking, you know, what's happening? And so my whole body is now getting um, agitated and anxious. So this breathing clears that carbon dioxide out, clears our brain, tells the vagus nerve to tell my heart, it's okay everything's fine, calm down, there's no you know, danger here, and it activates our relaxation response. It reduces my heart rate and blood pressure. This breathing regulates my entire nervous system, and it calms my entire body down. Now, the piece that I was not always remembering about this 478 breathing is that you have to have a really long exhale to get all that carbon dioxide out. So I'm gonna do all the counting. I'm gonna invite you to practice with me, but I'm gonna be going one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, all the way to eight, especially on the exhale, all right? So I encourage you to remember to put in your Mississippis when you're counting, when you do this breathing technique. So the way that it goes is that we're gonna inhale through the nose for four seconds, hold it for seven, and then exhale through the mouth. And Dr. Weil would recommend um, putting your tongue behind your top front teeth. There's a little bit of a ridge there. And exhale like that. If you can't figure it out, just, just have an exhale. It's not, I don't think it's that important, but he suggests that. So I will do the counting um, in your mind's eye. You might visualize that you're breathing all the way to your stomach. People who do yoga call that belly balloon breathing. So your stomach's gonna get large. When you inhale, it's gonna go flat, just like in the drawing here, flat when you exhale. If you want, you can visualize in your mind's eye that you're breathing in calm, you're breathing in relaxation, you're breathing in love, and maybe you see it as a golden light that comes in. And when you exhale, you might wanna visualize exhaling worries, anxiety, and maybe that looks like a gray smoke. And you know what, just blow it up to the heavens. Just let them deal with it. So I'm gonna do the counting. Go ahead and get comfortable. And again, you can close your eyes or you can just gaze down to the floor. And let's start with an exhale to make room for the incoming oxygen. We're gonna do five of these. So inhale and hold it. And exhale. Beautiful. Inhale. And hold it. And exhale. Inhale. And hold it. And exhale. And two more. Inhale. And hold it. And exhale. One more inhale and hold it and exhale. Ah. 
<sighs> I love it. I love that breathing technique. So go ahead and scan your body. See what your number is. See if it's come down. If it hasn't come down much, do the breathing again. I mean, what, what was that? Three minutes maybe of breathing? It doesn't take very long. I would advise or I would recommend, excuse me, I would recommend having some tea. Scan your body throughout the day. Notice what you notice. See what um, big emotions might be in there. And if you notice you're getting to a number four, do some breathing or do one of the techniques that I'm teaching you. Because, you know, once we get to five or six, we go right to 10, right? It's so easy to just go flying all the way up to 10. And then we're not at our best selves. We're not in control anymore. All the old stuff or whatever is coming up and, and that's, you know, the, or that anxiety, that anger, that's what's in control. And we're not, we're not our best selves. So scan your body often. Now, in their book, The Power of Showing Up, How Parental Presence Shapes Who Our Kids Become and How Their Brains Get Wired, Dr. Siegel and Dr. Payne Bryson have found that children who form secure relationships with their caregivers lead happier and more fulfilling lives. They say these types of relationships are formed when parents respond to the needs of their children by providing the four S's, and that's safe, seen, soothed, and secure. So the first S is safe. When it comes to safety, parents need to keep kids safe and make them feel safe. Now this is done by protecting them from harm and avoid becoming a source of fear and threat. So that means do no harm. Make a commitment with your child and yourself that you will not be the source of fear in your home. Remember, you're bigger than them. Your body language, your voice, your tone, your eyes, all of that may look, feel, sound, angry and gruff, and you might not even be aware of it. <laughs> I know when my son, my oldest son was younger, um, apparently my eyes tend to get really big when I'm like making a point. And at some point he's like, mom, <laughs> chill with the eyes, would you? Because it was scaring him. I had no idea. So I've learned to become aware of how big my eyes get. So become aware. And you know what? If you slip up, make amends. Again, none of us are perfect parents. Repair that relationship and reconnect as soon as possible. Apologize if necessary. Get down to their level. Talk to them. And remember, again, we all make mistakes especially if our parents were gruff with us. You know, we need to work, to work to be better than our parents. And then that helps our kids feel safe and comfortable with us. So create that overall feeling that your home is a safe and well-being environment, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Now, if this is hard for you, practice it. And, you know, you can practice by saying things out loud, um, having a script uh, in front of the mirror. Practice makes things permanent, not perfect. When we practice things, it changes the old patterns or the old programs that are in our brain. And that's that neuroplasticity you might have heard of. And when we practice, we get rid of those programs. We have new behaviors then. So practice is really important and we all need to practice. The second S is seen. To truly see our kids, they need three things from us. They need for us to attune to their internal mental state. So that's how they think, how they process things and, and do that on a profound and meaningful level. We need to understand their inner life. So how they feel and how they respond and to respond to what we see in a timely and effective manner. This is the definition of I understand you, I feel you, I see you, I know who you are. So spend time observing your child, really paying attention to what they are doing so you can understand who they are and what they're about. So you can get to know what they like, what they dislike, get down on the floor and play with them, 
really look them in the eyes when they talk to you and talk to them in a way they feel comfortable taking you into their world. So, so find these moments for them to show you who they really are. Now, my, my baby, my daughter, who's 25, she loved paper and she's on the spectrum. So, so there's always things to be learning about Tara, but she loved walking around with paper and holding it and rubbing it in her fingers. I didn't understand what that was about. Today, she still loves paper. And today she's, she's making um, origami with it and she's cutting it and she's making uh, stars to put on top of the Christmas tree or lanterns. I mean, it's amazing what she can do with paper. But I, you know, I didn't know where that was going when she was a kid. I just was there for her. And I just, you know, paid attention to her love of paper, you know, even as a child. So ask them questions. Let them explain. Don't interrupt or interpret for them. Yes, we know what's what, but let them tell us. This doesn't need to take hours. So know that you don't have to spend, obviously we don't have all day, right? These days, you don't have to take all day or hours to do this. Five, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Is, and, and you can do it throughout the day. And please work to do this without the distractions as best you can of cell phones, TVs, or other people around. Beautiful. All right, you've been sitting way too long. But I wanna teach you right now something called the Donna Eating Cross Crawl. And like it says in the slide, you can do this sitting or standing. Um, and I'm going to stand and show you how to do it. So this is a great one if you're feeling stuck. So your brain is stuck. Go. Okay, you keep revisiting the same old issues over and over and over, or you're feeling just low energy, you just ugh, can't move forward. Our, ener our, our energy, right, is meant to move, like I said, and it's the emotions, our energy in motion. So it's all meant to flow and communicate within our body. So if you're feeling stuck or frozen or stagnant, or you can't focus, then this is a great way for you to un get unstuck and be able to take in that information. This also is really great for coordination and reading. So there's a couple ways to do this. You can do this sitting down, you can do this standing. They both work great. And if you're sitting, you're gonna take your hand and tap with your left hand, tap your right knee, with your right hand, tap your left knee. All right, so you're sitting and you're tapping, and you're crossing, your body information is crossing. If you're standing, you can tap also like that, or I'll just make sure you can see, you can use your elbow. So left elbow to your right knee, right elbow to your left knee, all right? What's happening is the right side of your brain is talking to the left side of your body, and the left side of your brain is talking to the right side of your body. That's the cross part of it. What I want you to do is I want you to, if you can move, just right arm up, left knee up, <laughs> left arm up, right knee, and cross that way. And this is like crawling on the ground. So let's do 10 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale. Beautiful. Isn't this fun? <laughs> I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun. So, okay. <sighs> um, again, your right side of your body is talking to the left side, the left side is talking to the right side. Um, this is what's really cool about this is if you're someplace in public and you're dragging and you're ruminating about something, you can do this in your head because we're energetic beings, our thoughts, you know, our energy follows our thoughts. So if we think that our right arm is going up and our left knee is going up, it's actually happening because we're energetic beings. So you can do this anywhere, really. Um, wonderful tool, wonderful tool. 
oh, that was good. This is also really great for kids. This helps, like I said, with coordination. This is great for kids with coordination. This helps with their reading. And if they're just got, if they have too much energy, they need to be grounded, have them do this. You might wanna make this a daily reset for your energy and just do this when you wake up, after you're done brushing your teeth, whenever. Make it part of your daily routine. Ah, <sighs> all right. The third S is soothed. When your child is in a state of distress or dysregulation, you can help them shift that experience by being there for them with love and with care. So rub their back. You let them know, oh, that must have been so scary or so difficult, but you're okay now. It's okay. There you go. And you know, this is something that I teach all my clients to do for themselves. So one hand underneath the armpit, your other hand on your shoulder. Oops, sorry. Didn't readjust. And you're just going to hold yourself and you're going to hug yourself. And I like to rock. And if I'm upset, I just might go, okay, it's all right. It's all right, Regina. Big deal. You made a mistake. Big deal. It's okay. You're all right now. And in do it as long as you need to do it. So, you know, your child might still be in a place of pain. And again, it's okay to feel our feelings, but they're not gonna feel alone. This interaction of soothing them will help your child learn to self-soothe herself with your example of soothing her. And again, if your child catches you soothing yourself, you know, hugging yourself, what a great example. And you can have them do it with you so that they know and then they copy. They can teach their friends. So when your kids are upset, give them peace. Give them presence, engagement, affection, calmness, and empathy. And those three S's will equal secure. So when we help our kids feel safe, seen, soothed, then they feel secure. They need a secure base in life to feel safe. They need us to see them and care for them emotionally. And they need to know that we will soothe them when they are distressed. Then they learn to keep themselves safe, to see themselves as worthy, and to soothe themselves when things go wrong. Feeling secure means they can trust that others will show up for them, which then helps them trust themselves and their world. So now if you're asking yourself, how do I give this to my children? I don't even know how to give this to myself. It's a great question. The answer is you become your own parent. I believe that our parents did the best they could raising us based on the way that they were raised. And whether you agree with that or not, I really do believe they were doing their best. It might not have been great. Our job is to be better parents than our parents, and then our children will be better parents than us. So please become your own parent. We cannot change other people or our environment. All we can change is how we respond to others and the environment, which is what these tools you are learning tonight are all about. I can't change other people or what's happening on the planet, but I can change how my body responds to these events. So if I give these tools to myself first, then I can give it to others. All right, another sip, tea sip time. Coming for health. This has to be <laughs> the easiest tool that I'm gonna teach you tonight and the most fun, I think. The Humming Effect, the book by Jonathan Goldman and Andy Goldman. They write that humming is one of the simplest and yet most profound sounds that we can make. If you have a voice and can speak, you can hum. Research has shown humming to be much more than a self-soothing sound. It affects us on a physical level. It reduces stress, it induces calmness and enhances sleep, as well as lowering heart rate and blood pressure 
and it produces powerful neurochemicals such as oxytocin, which is that love hormone. The endorphins reduce pain and increase good feelings. This, there's just so much that humming does for us. Um, migraines, helps relieve migraines, improves hearing, um, increases level of melatonin. Now that's that, that hormone that helps us regulate our sleep. It helps balance blood sugar levels. So this is great if you're a diabetic. Increases the release of the oxytocin. That's that love hormone that also we, it's a hormone that helps us um, feel good, warm and fuzzy, and it helps with stress. Um, those endorphins, like I, I mentioned, it um, just has wonderful, energizes the entire nervous system, improves concentration, again, because it's gonna be getting that carbon dioxide out of the brain, and it has quick and lasting effects for relaxation. So it's been around for, for I think forever. It's in many world traditions. If you're um, a meditator or a chanter or do yoga or anyone else, you may be familiar with the om or the aum. And um, the way I was taught to do the om is more like a aum. And there's that humming at the end of it. So it's part of the Hindu and the Tibetan traditions. That, that humming part helps heal our body, our mind, our spirit. And it's using the vibration that happens. I mean, you feel it right there in your jaw when you're humming. And it's that vibration that it raises our vibration so we can heal our bodies. Isn't that incredible? I love it. Now, my daughter, I mentioned earlier, when she was young, when she was very young, every night before, well, as she was falling asleep at night, she hummed. And it, it wasn't a song, it was just a hmm as she was falling asleep. And I didn't know what she was doing. But then once I started learning about humming for health, I realized, wow, you know, we're born with so many of these tools and um, our, our bodies are brilliant. We know how to heal ourselves. And maybe we used them as a kid and we forgot or it just wasn't important anymore to hum or to whatever. But I just, I love how our bodies know how to heal. So um, in their book, they also state that at the heart of your health and healing are your body's energies. And at the heart of your body's energies is vibrations. So I just love that because humming is a vibration that heals. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to practice with me. And one of the easiest things to hum is happy birthday. So everybody knows the song. If, since no one can hear you, if you wanna hum something else, go right ahead. But I'm gonna hum happy birthday and I'm going to watch my clock here and set it for about three minutes. Five minutes would be even better. 10 minutes would be great. Humming all day long is wonderful. But uh, let's give it three minutes. Do your sud scale if you'd like. See if you're if um, there's any anxiety or anything you want to work on. See what the number is. Do the humming and then check afterwards. All right. So let's do three minutes of humming. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know it's weird. Just go with me. Get everybody involved. Bring all the kids in. One more. 
more minute. I bet you've never done this in a program before. All right, I think that was just under three minutes. And I think I'm gonna stop because I'm getting so relaxed I won't be able to go on. Um, what you know what comes to me when I realize as I'm doing that is that 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 humming is that long exhalation. And so that's reduce releasing, removing all of that carbon dioxide from my lungs. My brain is very sharp at the moment and I'm very lax at the same time. So hum. You know, in, in these tools that I, I'm teaching you, like that one, they're free. That one's pretty much literally right under your nose. There's no prescription required for these. There's no side effects except feeling better. And you can do these almost anywhere. Um, now, of course, they don't replace a medical doctor for a medical issue. So please, if there's something serious, of course, you're going to call your doctor. But um, otherwise, you can breathe. I breathe the 478 breathing. I do that at the dentist's office because I don't really like being at the dentist's office. I can do it with all the instru instruments in my mouth. I do it um, when I'm driving in the snow. If cars are not being very good drivers, I'll do my breathing. You know, if I notice I'm white knuckling the steering wheel, I do the breathing. I'll do it sometimes um, just with my family if, if I know I need to calm myself down. So practice these, try them on, see what works for you. Thank you. All right, resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back. These, all these tools, create resilience. So first we need to make connections. Find someone that you can talk to, a trusted person, share someone that you can share your deepest, darkest secret. Someone that you feel safe with, because you know, when you shine a light on those things that, hmm, okay, we may not be very proud of, and we all have them, a mistake that we made, you might call it your darkness. Shining a light on your darkness with a trusted person will definitely help you feel better. And make it someone that's not critical of you or judging. It's got to be someone that can listen. And you know what? Work to not be judgy to yourself. It's really important. You know, they say that we, it'd be, it would be wonderful if we would talk to ourselves, especially when we're feeling critical. Talk to ourselves like we would to a toddler or to our best friend. We wouldn't get judgy with them. We wouldn't get all critical with them. And you know, if you don't have any friends like that, find some new friends. It's important to have at least one good, trustworthy friend that you can talk to. Now, also know bad things happen. Bad things happen to good people. Everyone has tough times. No one is immune to tough times. So work to not have that victim mentality. Oh, why me? Why is everything always happening to me? How come blah, blah, blah? That's not going to help you. That's definitely not going to raise your vibration and get you into that place of feeling good. Again, we can't change a pandemic. We can only change how our body responds to it. So doing these tools is going to help you change your body and get into that um, more calm, relaxed, uh, stress-free place. Life has ups and downs. Know that this too will pass. And then next, tune into those good vibrations. Find something positive in your life and focus on it. Spend quality time with yourself. Soothe yourself. Dance, sing, listen to uplifting music, read, take a bath, write in your journal, hum, go for a walk. See yourself for who you are and care about yourself. 
If you pray, pray. Pray the serenity prayer. Whatever you want to pray. Practice gratitude. Find three things every day that you can say I'm grateful for. And please work to cut back on the news and find the gifts that are, that are out there. Look for the good and the good people. I don't know if any of you watched um, when the pandemic first started, there was a program on YouTube called SGN or Some Good News. Now this was created by John Krasinski who played Jim on The Office. It was beautiful. It's still there on YouTube. If you haven't seen them, I highly recommend. I cried almost every episode. It, and he just did this because he wanted to give back. You know, there was, he was getting paid or anything. Oh, I just loved it. So I highly recommend it. And ask yourself, is what I'm doing helping me or harming me? Is what I'm eating, drinking, watching, reading, saying, listening to, YouTubing, Googling, is it helping me or is it not helping me? If it's not helping you, work to cut back on it. It, it, those are the things that we take in and we, I know we can get addicted to them and they're fun and some of them are whatever. But if it's not, if you don't feel good afterwards, then maybe it's not something that you want to take into your body. Because again, we're energy that affects our energy. And last, are you motivated? What's your motivation to get through things? You know, everyone can do this. We just have to be willing to try. And please take baby steps and be super, super kind to yourself while you're getting through this. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. Learn to lean into new behaviors. They say it takes 66 days to, to make a new behavior automatic. Practice. Now, this exercise called finger holds for managing stress and emotions is something that I learned from a woman, again, probably 25 years ago, um, Dr. Patricia Kane. And she has this organization called www.capacitar.org. She would take these energy techniques, because again, we're energetic beings, into people in um, high stress um, environments. Um, in, so she'd go to South Africa. She'd go to Northern Ireland. She'd go wherever there was strife and fighting and um, just really, really rough uh, environments. And she would say to them, I can't change your environment. I can't change your village. I can't change what's going on in your town, but I'm gonna teach you these exercises to help you manage how your body responds. So again, all these exercises, especially this one is great for your kids. Um, this is a really simple way to work with our emotions by holding each finger of the opposite hand. Again, emotions and feelings are like waves of energy moving through the body and the mind. So through each finger runs a channel or a meridian of energy. So that's Chinese medicine. With strong or overwhelming feelings, energy can become blocked or repressed, resulting in pain or congestion in the body. So that's why you might go to an acupuncturist or get acupressure done, because that's going to push on those pressure points that helps release any stuck energy in the body. So the idea here is that holding, holding the fingers, so you're going to hold the fingers on the opposite hand, and you want to hold it for about two to five minutes. And that is what is going to help unstuck that stuck energy, producing calm and deep peace in the body. So if you look at the drawing there, uh, the meridians that come out to the fingertips each have a different emotion. So the thumb is for adults, tears, grief, emotional pain. For kids, you just wanna say, if you're upset, hold your thumb. Again, this is why kids suck their thumb when they're babies, because they already know that's gonna calm them down. We are brilliant when we are born. It's like we have everything we need to heal ourselves. So the thumb, upset, emotional pain. This finger, the first finger, is about fear or panic. So what I like about this exercise is you can do this. Kids can do this when they're sitting at school. If they're at school or at home, 
you just, you know, put your hand in your lap and you can be holding the fingers. You can do it almost anywhere. You can't do it driving, but um, two to five minutes. Middle finger, I think everybody knows what that one's about. Anger, rage, being mad. The ring finger, people will um, absentmindedly uh, twirl their rings because that one's about worry and anxiety. Again, we already know this stuff. Pinky, um, having self-doubts, low self-esteem, or feeling bad. So again, the opposite sides. Um, you're going to breathe in deeply. You're going to acknowledge the strong feeling inside, and then you're going to exhale and let it go. Again, breathe in um, health and strength and healing, and breathe out past feelings and problems. All right, so we have one more technique. I know we're coming up on 10 too. This is a healing meditation that I absolutely love. It's only five minutes long. It's called a quick coherence technique and it's um, heart math. If you've heard of heart math, this one I got from Julie Kakuska right off her YouTube um, channel. I would recommend if you want to um, get your phone and record this because then you can listen to it anytime you want. So let's do it. Get your phones, record them if you'd like and get comfortable. Find a comfortable place, either sitting or lying down. And you can do this with your eyes open or with your eyes closed or just gazing at the floor. Uncross your arms, uncross your legs. Release all the tension from your body, feeling fully supported. Now bring your attention and your awareness to your heart. In your mind's eye, focus on the center of your chest and simply notice your heart and the heart space around it. And while continuing to focus on your heart, take some slow, easy, refreshing breaths. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And in your mind's eye, try to imagine that your breath is coming in and out of your heart space. See it coming in, swirling around your heart, and then slowly going back out. Now I invite you to add a positive heart feeling. Recall a time when you felt good. A situation that filled your heart with joy, excitement, happiness, peacefulness or gratitude. Relive that memory now. and really tap into the emotions that you were experiencing. Allow them to just well up inside your body. The key is to shift from your head to your heart and shift from thinking about the situation to feeling the emotion. Simply imagine you are back in time, reliving this moment. Continue your heart-focused breathing in and out. In and out. And if your mind wanders, that's okay. Gently bring your attention back to your heart space. Breathe and recall your positive memory. And when you're ready, slowly bring your attention back to the room, 
Open your eyes if they're closed. And try to hold on to the way that you feel right now as you go about the rest of this day, this evening. By taking heart-focused breaths while recalling a positive emotion, you can begin to regulate your emotions in the moment to stop the drain that emotionally charged situations can have on your system. And instead, begin adding energy to your system anytime, anywhere. All right. All right, so let's recap. <clears throat> Easy tools you learn, body scan for mindfulness, the force innate breathing for relaxation, cross crawl for energy flow, humming for health, finger holds for managing emotions and stress. And we also talked about Dr. Siegel and Dr. Payne Bryson's book, The Power of Showing Up, How Parental Presence Shapes Who Our Kids Become and How Their Brains Get Wired. And again, they need that safe and seen and soothed to feel secure. What it means to be resilient or having the ability to bounce back. And as we just did, that five minute meditation for feeling better. All right, so that is my presentation. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I am going to turn this over to Jana and... Yeah, thank you so much, Regina. It's a wonderful way to spend an evening. I feel very relaxed. Oh, good. But if any of you have any questions, Regina would love to take some time and answer your personal questions. You can type them into the chat and I will read them. But I also think we're a small enough group that if you want to unmute yourself and just go ahead and ask the question, um, and please be brave and ask because probably other people might have the same question as you do. And uh, it, we would love to hear the, hear the answers to the questions you have. So go ahead and type them into the chat or unmute yourself and ask. I do not have a question, but... Um... It's more of a compliment that I just, I was just Googling something to look at on Zoom for my school assignment and this popped up and I just joined and to be honest, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for, for um, trying. Thank you for jumping in. So nice, brave. All right, here's a question. Could, should kids practice the meditation we just did? Absolutely, absolutely. That would be great for kids. Um, the thing that's cool about kids is they're so much closer to, um, you know, the, the fun experiences of being a kid. Whereas we have to kind of go back a little bit farther sometimes. So it's easier for them to create. Yeah, yesterday I was playing with so-and-so and I had so much fun and it felt great. And it's, you know, I feel it here in my body. Sometimes it takes us a little bit longer, but we get there. We get there. So yeah, they can definitely practice this. Any other questions? Is there anything else in the chat? No, no. Okay. Must have touched on a lot of things. Or so, sleep. <laughs> no, sleep. I don't think so. <laughs> well, um, Regina has offered to raffle a book. Um, so I am going to randomly just scroll through the chats, uh, the participants and pick a person's name. And there we have a winner. So I will private message you um, that you are the winner and you can let um, me know. I'm hard, having a hard time typing and talking. <laughs> you can let me know, Regina would like to personalize the book. So who you want the book um, made out to. Right. And then Regina will send the book to the library and I will get it to you. Yeah. So uh, I've let the winner know and you can let me know who you want the book uh, made out to. I guess that's the way you say it, personal. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And if, you know, if a question comes up later, um, my information was there. 
uh, you can shoot me a text or um, go out to courageousgilbert.com or bluestonehealingcenter.com, Regina at, Regina at. Um, and I'd happy to be at, you know, answer any questions then, so. Great. And um, again, I've recorded this and um, I can just send all of you, I have your emails because you registered for the program, so I can send you all the recording and it will be posted up on our library website shortly um, with it, uh, names. Uh, days, not uh, minutes. So soon it will be posted for um, you can share with other people because I think it really was helpful. Oh, good. Oh, good. And remember, remember, all of you are really great parents, you know, so just keep being great parents and, you know, cut yourself some slack and, you know, keep doing your best because that's all we can do, right? Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Regina. Thank you, Jana. Be well, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.